merciful God's blessings come to be deserved and His divine pleasure is bestowed, a kind of people come to be born who with their wisdom and sagacity, elevated conduct and inspired knowledge and overwhelming, overwhelming love for mankind cause to bring about works and deeds for the weal and welfare of their fellow beings. Not for a moment is the fact obscure from their minds that man's position on this earth is that of the wise regent of God, the merciful, that such a preeminent position and dignity of man must never be allowed to be compromised with, and that when the position of man is debased, the system of the universe will be upset, and the difference will disappear between beast and man. Dr. A. Jones, who will be addressing you at this Shami Hamda today, and who has come from Australia at our invitation as our guest, is considered as one of those learned personalities who are concerned with the happiness and welfare of mankind. His presence in our midst is a source of pride and pleasure for us. I welcome him with all the sincerity of my heart and I include all of you ladies and gentlemen in this welcome. I thank Dr. Jones for having accepted our invitation and for his being in our midst this afternoon. The Australian National University in Canberra holds a distinguished position among universities for several reasons. The most obvious distinction which I noticed is the existence with fullest importance of a relationship based on respect and moderation between the teachers and those who are taught. The teacher is fired with passion to bring up his students to the heights of learning. And the students are respectful of the teacher's position as a guide to learning, which is their primary interest. The value and respect of knowledge and of teacher have given that piece of land the semblance of paradise and no one can be left unimpressed by it. <coughs> the portals of the Australian National University are, for over, are forever open for learning and scholars and every week and every month around the year some academic happenings or the other is held here. The university also renders every possible service to these happenings and bear whatever expenses it possibly can. I have uh, had personal experience of this university on two occasions. The International Congress on Traditional Asian Medicine 1979, International Congress, Quran through 14 centuries of Islam, 1980. The former gave birth to the International Association for the Study of Traditional Asian Medicine, which through uh, eight uh, of its chapters is keeping high the traditions of Tib and which is making preparation for the medicine of tomorrow through its activities. 
a system of medicine which would be close to nature. This humble servant is a modest worker of this international movement as its vice president. The Quran Congress has the status of a milestone. Dr. A. Jones is the moving spirit behind it and as a result of it an international Quran association has come into existence and I have been given the honor to be its president. It is expected that the second Quran Congress will be held towards the end of 1981 in New Delhi under the auspices of the Indian Institute of Islamic Studies, which is a great organization working under the Hamdat Foundation of India. The first Quran Congress at the Australian National University was a glorious sight. Large halls were serving as places for offering namaz, and the Muslim's call came vibrating. Halal food was available for all delegates from all over the world. <coughs> I cannot forget the soul-elevating arrangements made by Dr. Jones. If I a model of religious tolerance, that a Christian university held a Quran Congress with such great aplomb and in true Islamic fashion. Today you have just heard a recitation from the, of, of the Shami Hamdard of Surah Rahman. Its rendering uh, into English has been done by Dr. Jones. These days he is busy translating the Quran. The subject of Professor A. Jones' lecture this evening is religious schools and teachers in the, Islam, in the Islamization of South, of South East Asia. We know that education is the most effective way to enforce the ideology of a society or a country. Without synchronizing the system of education with the overall system of the society, a stable balance cannot be achieved in the people's temperament and the politico-legal framework, a balance which guarantee a solid basis for any way of life. Sincere and organized efforts which, we, which are being made today in Pakistan and elsewhere in Southeast Asia to Islamize the social system there make it necessary for their stability and success to pay greatest attention to mankind, to, to, to making education con consonant with the Islamic ideology. This is because educational institutions and teachers alone can play a vital role to help promote the Islamic point of view and, the, uh, and to mold people's thinking and actions in the Islamic pattern. It is necessary that the problem should be surveyed from this angle. I am glad that Professor A. Jones has selected for his lecture this evening such an important and thought-provoking topic. I am sure that, this, uh, that his views on this subject will be useful food for our thought and that we shall profit from his views and knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, the personage who is presiding over this Shami Hamdard is well known not only in Pakistan 